So you wanna get into property, but with interest rates going up as a direct response to try and curb inflation and with the stock markets plummeting, with cryptos plummeting, are we buying at a peak? Are you gonna be buying at the wrong time and you're gonna be in when it's high and it's gonna drop and you're gonna lose money instantly? What do you do? Also with the prices of homes going up, are you gonna hang on and do the same as you've done at the start of COVID and say, let me hang on and wait for the dip? What do you do? So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you exactly how you can navigate uncertain times and what style properties you should be buying as a property investor, depending on where you are in your journey. So I'm Harvey, I'm a remote property investor, and at the moment I'm actually in my remote gold mine location. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not only gonna show you in this video how to navigate any market conditions, though like Warren Buffett says time in the market beats time in the market. So I'm gonna show you what style properties on patch, why I'm up here, the style properties to look out for, how to analyze them properties, how to find these properties on right move, and ultimately how you to invest in uncertain times. But one thing that's not too uncertain, if you smash that like button right now, and I mean like now, you're gonna get a little bit of confetti as a congratulations for that. So I know your time is valuable to you. So along the bottom of this video, you're gonna see some timestamps so you can jump to the relevant part of that. I've just got to my remote gold mine location, as I said, and I just got to the hotel. I'm gonna share with you lots of little tips along the way. So I stay in the Sporting Lodge in, is it Middlesbrough or Stockton? I'm not quite sure, but it's on the edge of both of them. And the reason I stay here is reasonably priced, but it's got fantastic gym in there. Uh, it's got a great sauna and steam room, which works well. It's great for networking in those places. Every time I'm in the steam room, what I do is I just say to people, are you in the gym? Like there's a lot of local people use the gym. Or are you from the hotel and if they're local, I end up asking for recommendations for builders. Do they know anybody? Blah, blah, blah. I tell them what I do and that conversation leads to there. Another reason I like staying here as well, as I said, the food has got a decent menu, but when you come up with regular, so at one point when I was really building my network out and really getting the momentum, I was coming up about every two weeks. So it's reasonably priced, as I said. So you wanna find somewhere that's a good base. And for me, food, gym is very, very important. But in the meantime, I'm gonna pop and ask probably the most weirdest request I've ever done in this hotel. It's totally unproperty related. But I'm just about to ask, I've got an ice pack in here. My shoulder's a bit sore from the gym. So I'm just gonna ask them if they've got a freezer and if they don't mind if I put this ice pack into the freezer so I can ice my back. So will the property market continue to defy our gravity? Basically, in the start of COVID, we all thought the property market's gonna drop. We've got major signs that the property market's gonna drop again, and we're led, heading into a cost of living crisis. So according to this article by Right Move, the cost of living crisis is to halt the surge in house prices. And they state in this, Asking prices has risen again, but the cost of living crisis coupled with increased mortgage rates will filter through to the market and keep prices in check, new data shows. But as I said, right moves data is asking prices. So the average property coming to the market hit a new record for the fourth consecutive month, raising to £367,501, according to the latest figures from Right Move. This increase is a 2.1% or 7400 and it is the highest at this time of the year since May 2014. So this is really defying odds. The property, the stock markets are down, the crypto markets are down, we're at a cost of living crisis, but yet still the property market's growing. It is massively a supply and demand issue. So the supply of houses is really low, the inventory and the stock's low, but the supply of money has been really, really good. But is this about to alter? Is this interest rate rise about to change it? Are banks gonna start being a little bit more cautious? I'm already seeing signs of this, especially in the commercial lending with HMOs. Some banks are now, one of my uh, coaching clients, he's gone to a bank for a loan and he needs commercial finance for it. It's a HMO, it's a sui generous one. And the broker was saying, to him that they're now looking at, because you get a multiplier of gross income, they're now looking at how you structured your bills on your AST. So if you've got 
a HMO AST that says plus bills or it's going to go up with CPI. If bills go up, your AST prices will go up. There'll be a rent increase. Then the banks are looking at this at the moment, but they're not taking the gross figures in account as much as they was before. So will this start filtering through? and how will the market play out? Look, as I said before, time in the market is impossible. Check out this little clip from uh, Ray, not Ray Daddio, check out this little clip. I've got these two in my mind at the moment. But check out this little quick clip from Warren Buffett, what he says about trying to time the markets and basing your investment decisions on time in the market. The interesting thing is, uh, you know, obviously, we haven't the faintest idea what the stock market is gonna do when it opens on Monday. We never have had. We have never made, Charlie and I, I don't think, in all the time we've worked together, and I'll tell you something later on, maybe about how learning takes place, but we have, we have never, I don't think we've ever made a decision that where either one of us has either said or been thinking we should buy or sell based on what the market is going to do. Uh, no. Or, or for that matter, on, on what the economy is going to do. We, we don't know. So I just met Ben. Ben is working with us at the moment, one of the team, and we're going to go around and check out some projects. But before that, we're going to try and book in some viewings. So what I thought would be useful for you is to show you how we find deals on Rightmove. There's still a ton of deals to be found on Rightmove. It's getting ever competitive. It's getting competitive in every avenue you, you try and find deals on, whether it's direct to vendor, Rightmove, Whatever method you use, you're going to find some competition today, but it doesn't mean you should give up. It means you should stay persistent and consistent with that. So what I'm going to do now is, I love using my phone, so I'll show you a little bit now on my phone for the purpose of this, but if you want to watch the extended video of this, or if you are watching extended video, you're going to see it on the laptop in a little while. If you're watching on the day in the life sort of style video, make sure you subscribe because it's going to come out very soon, an extended, more deep dive version of this. But let me just tell you, show you quickly what I will do on Rightmove when I'm looking for deals. So I use the app, open the app up. If you go to your area, type an area in. So what I'll do is I'll, instead of typing my current area in, I'll type in, Middlesbrough. So we do buy in Middlesbrough, but don't know it quite so well. So it's nice to show an example of something I don't know so well. So what I would do is, if I start searching the area for the first time, I'm going to put in any time. And what I want to do is put in sold subject contact, sold subject to contract, and then see what comes to the market. What I initially do is go from the cheapest, ignore a lot of this sort of, a lot of this guy price, five grand stuff that is just, clickbait stuff to try and get you in as auctions. They very rarely sell for that price, but a lot of the stuff priced at that are in really bad areas trying to attract outside investors. I always put it within a five or 10 mile radius. That's why stuff's coming up in Stockton. And let's just look at anything. For example, this is Hartley Pulse, it's not my area. What I would do with this is sold subject contracts is a lot of people don't realize at the bottom of this, you can analyze this deal really, really quickly. So, you can go into here and see what the comparables are. So 2019 is not really comparable today. The market's growing so fast in the Northeast. It's difficult, but you can start getting a gauge and there's no photos on that one, so it's not a great example. Let's go on to another one. And once I've searched through this a few times, I would then come back to, like if I've been on there every day, I would go back to the search and then I'll put it in, instead of any time, I'd put it in within the last 24 hours because obviously I've been through everything else that's on there, so we just want to search every single day. If I hadn't been on there for three days, I'll put in within the last three days. If I've not been on there for a week, I'll put in within the last week. So let's have a look at this deal. So here, you look at the condition. It's in great condition already, not great. That's a painted kitchen by the looks of it. But it doesn't particularly need work, it looks nice. So again, not much to do on there. If you look at comparable site prices, I'd imagine they're trying to go above what the old comparables are because the market's hot at the moment. And sure enough, they are. So 87 and 78, and it probably would have achieved that money because the market has grown that, that sort of much. So another tip to do though, when you're looking for properties, and as I said, we will go into analyze a deal. I'll show you how we analyze a deal, analyze a new area in a bit more depth. But another way to search, when you search this area, is to go to sort in the top left hand corner and sort by the oldest listing. Because this will show you stuff that's been on the market, been sticking. You can very rarely find a deal that stacks straight away. It's not like a sweet shop and you can just sit there and think to yourself, okay, I'll fancy pick a mix today and I'm gonna have a BMV deal, you know, and I'm gonna have this deal. It's very rarely they advertise that. And if they are advertised, the deal stacks, somebody else is gonna buy it pretty quick. So what you have to do then 
is look at stuff that's got potential or been on for overpriced. And it's been on for a while, they could potentially start being motivated. And the power's in the follow up with a lot of things. Not so many things are staying on the market to follow up, but there is the odd thing that is still. So Ben is chief of acquisitions with this as well. So Ben's out doing this every day for us. Ben's doing some of the direct to vendor stuff as well. Uh, how's the direct to vendor stuff going, Ben? How's the letters going? Yeah, it's struggling definitely on the direct to vendor massively. Mm -hmm. Are we getting your leads or responses with you? Conversions about like one in every 50, so about 5%. Yeah, okay. So it's going down at the moment, and that's what you've got to look at. In each different market circumstances, in different times when you're in the market, these leads and these conversions will massively change as well. Yeah, let's look at this one. Red car, looks like it's a doer upper. So again, this is a great example. So you see straight away it needs work. So let's have a look to see nearby sole prices, 165, and there are the last one, they're asking for 150. And let's have a look to see what this 165 condition was like. So this is in good condition, and this is 2021. So they're being quite ambitious to ask for 150. The market has gone up in the last year, but I'm not sure to the extent of the work that they're doing to this one. But what you, another trick you want to do is, on my phone, I've opened right move the actual website browser. I saved it to my screen, you can do that. And if you search in here, also you'll get different comparables to what you would actually in the nearby sold prices. And if you go on a laptop, again, you're gonna get different comparables when you go in there, but you've got to dive deep. Not all the comparables show up everywhere. Even across right move, different comparables show up across a different platform depending where you're searching it from. So when we're looking at the property delta matrix, this is a prime example of making sure you've got that great foundation in place. You've got to make sure that uh, you've got support in what you're doing already to support a bigger job like this. So at the moment, we've had lots of challenges. It's run on longer. We've had complaints from the neighbors with the original stuff that we want to do. So planning got rejected. We've pulled our planning application out. So stuff like this, you've got to make sure you've got a foundation of the other stuff that we're showing you to make sure you can support the bigger projects. These are much more rewarding and can be potentially much more lucrative. But the danger of the market we're going at the moment, the commercial lenders are starting to change their appetite towards this. But I've got a great foundation. It might mean I'll leave a bit more money in it and I hope for a while, but I'm still going to get good return on that. But come on, let's go in and have a little look around. So I've not been here for a little while, so last time I was here, I didn't see this, but this is new, addition in. But we got this from a mismeasured jolt door, so yeah, this was a 500 quid, I think we'll give about 600 quid or 700 quid and had that made up to, to fit in there as well. As I said, the first time I've been back, that's on the wall now, looks nice. So let's take you around here anyway. As I said, you definitely got to be thinking about the property uh, delta matrix for doing jobs like this, but on suites going in there, we're not going to get the plumber on uh, film. So uh, if you just, he's got his back to us at the moment, so if you just quickly stick your nose in there for now, we've got an ensuite in there, that's going to be a bedroom with ensuite. If you follow us around into here, this is a bedroom with ensuite with a kitchenette area. So a little tip with this as well, if you put kitchenette areas in there with no cooking facilities, it's not a full on cell container, but put a microwave on there, somebody's got their own sort of little studio. In here, we've got an ensuite shower with designer rad. At the back here, At the back here, this is going to be a communal area, so we're having another sink in there, washing machine in here. We're going to put, uh, we've got a nice radiator on the wall there. We're going to put, we're going to put, a, just a, a, make it like a little bit of an office room as well. So we can put a computer in here probably, and just a table and some dining area, some stuff for people. And back to storage at the moment. <laughs> Got these lights from Dwell and on a massive discount they was. I think I paid 40 quid for them, but about 180 quid lights from Dwell. So through into here, this is gonna be the main communal area. So we've got a feature wall up there, which was a lot of wrangling to get done, but we've got it done. Got a lovely kitchen in here. This is from Wix, it's an X display. So somebody we just bought a couple of doors, bought the base units from Hardens, because Hardens base units are cheaper than Wix and we mixed and matched a few bits and made that out, but I'm pretty happy with this. 
So yeah, little tip, when, what we've done with this was, we are gonna have to get three phase electric in, but because the join was from across the road, we, it was gonna be about six grand to get the joint in here. So we changed these from to gas hot hobs and ovens. We also downgraded the showers. So we've got showers, uh, electric showers, but we took them from a 12.5 kilowatt, I believe they was, or something on them nines, down to a 7.5. So we reduced the power coming in. So we didn't have to then do the three phase, so save six grand on digging the road up and bringing the three phase in. But it's gonna be the main communal area. Ceilings have been done with insulation, soundproofing. This is our main communal bathroom, but where's so many en suites? It's gonna just act as an off suite basically for that room there. So in here as well, this is another bedroom with an en suite. Pretty self explanatory, just looking with the bed wires, because we've got that there like that. But. So again, another bedroom here. This wall, that bathroom there is gonna act as an off suite to there because all the other bedrooms at the moment have got their own bathroom. So yeah, let's take you upstairs and have a look on the final one. Big cylinder tank in there to pump this full house. So in here, we've got another bedroom with an ensuite. It's another room there, no ensuite in that one but that would be served as an off suite for the other one if we ever use it like that but it's just a communal at the moment in here again this is another nice size we're going to get the bed over here this is going to act as a wardrobe basically some sort of storage for people so we don't have to get a wardrobe in here and yeah you've got a little kitchenette area so people got their plugs there they can we've got a fridge freezer there and again same theory as downstairs don't need the don't need the planning as an individual room, but it still acts as that. And a nice bathroom ensuite in here of a shower. In here, so this is gonna be a nice room. These two, there's a couple of really big ones in here and they should achieve good money. So yeah, this pulled up outside here. This is what I'm talking about. When I talk about the property Delta Matrix, this is more of a little bit safer. So when I, if, if, if I show you my, uh, portfolio and all weather portfolio this creeps into the bit of the higher endy sort of ones so you won't want a portfolio full of these because you're going to go for working professional tenants it's probably going to be more like 750 maybe even 800 pound a month rental income and benefits only pay 500 pound a month so this is quite a long way away from from what benefits will pay so if somebody lost their job then as a result you'd have a long shortfall to pay for this if that's going on to benefits so this is not the stable foundational level of this and if i show you my delta wealth matrix let's have a look on this part here but my portfolio the normal buy to lets are covered by housing benefits uh, are in this section this is the section here like a bit higher end ones so you you don't want a large proportion of your portfolio of these style but they're great in there because you do get working professionals there is more capital appreciation on these style properties uh, and they're a lot more easier resale properties if you ever wanted to sell so let's go in let's make the new, the new builder and see what's going on in there So a little tip for budding uh, property investors, a great vehicle to buy is a, an estate. So I always buy estate cars because then when you put the seats down, they double up as a van. And the way I do high mileage, like just get a diesel, two litre diesel, really economic. And obviously I put the mileage on it being like, I usually get buy them about eight year old because then the price has dropped out of them and being economic as well. It really, really helps me driving up and down to a remote location and it doubles up as a van, as I said. Hi everybody, so just stood outside this property. This is one of our investors. We're project managing the reef for this one. So this is this the state over here is one of my favorite states up here. Again, when you look at the property Delta Matrix, basically this was perfect for that Delta Matrix. Now it's starting to slip out of it because the price is going up. We just got a rent agreed. Ben is behind the camera doing a fantastic job. He's got a rent agreed uh, on this, even in this state at 625, I believe it was. It's 625, Ben, give us a thumbs up in front of the camera to see if you agree, yep. So, uh, 625 we've got for this so now this takes us out from that 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 safety zone because if that tenant can't pay it's 125 pound a month that's a drop in rent 
this property, we bought a property literally down there to the left just before COVID for uh, 55, well, 61K with the auction fees. Identical property to this, same sort of space, same, same condition, and we give 61K for it. This is just over 90K. So you see how the market's moved. We rented that for 550 at the time. We're now renting this for 625. Seeing how this is rented, we might have even tried our luck at 650, you know? So, but it takes you away from them, that part of, of the Delta that, that really gives you that safety for the Dan side of it. So you have to then look at the different styles. So if you look over there, over there is more the style properties that you're gonna get in that style, but the tenant profile is slightly lower, but still, still workable. But anyway, let's have a look around. It's first time for me in this property. So, okay, look, right, this is the project. So it won't rip out stage. Uh, we're at first fix electrics going in. So let's take you around and have a look what we're doing. So what we're doing in here is we're gonna be taking this out and making that into a door because this kitchen is a really, really odd shape. We've got no power in here, so let me get my torch out. So we're gonna have an L-shaped kitchen in there. We're gonna block this door off. I bought one around the corner from here. We've done exactly the same. We're gonna sacrifice this cupboard and just make this an L-shaped kitchen, block this off. Use that door there, because these doors are okay. Once they're painted the new handles on them, they'll look absolutely fine. So here they are, again, lock that door through. We're not gonna probably skim this, gonna probably just patch this in, the walls painted, new carpet stand will look absolutely fine. So at the moment, with properties like this, got quite a lot of options, they're really solid, ex-local authority style built properties. But the thing is, there's a ceiling on these, so there's a bit of margin, so you have to be strategic around this. So kitchen's slightly small, people like open plan kitchens, but one, it's got conservation on the back, but you could knock that wall through just over there and make it a big open plan, cut it in half, make the living room smaller and have a big open plan kitchen. But because we've got this area here, we can use this as a utility. So basically we put the washing machine here and we'll put a, a unit there and the fridge and everything can come out here. It's an extra bit of space. You could knock this wall out again, but the money's not in these deals to knock these out. You've got a nice garage space there, a great corner plot. It's exactly what we've done on the, on the previous one. So that's why we're happy to sacrifice that cupboard over there, purely because we're gonna have enough space for, for across these two rooms as a kitchen. Not as ideal as an open plan, but I don't think the value would justify the cost of getting that ripped open. So let's go upstairs. These, this is definitely needs a plaster. We're advising the client, we're working with our investor to plaster over this. He's just deciding whether he's going to or not. Uh, but definitely needs a plaster. What we had in here, we had a quite a decent shower in there, but three bedrooms need, definitely three bedrooms need, uh, they need baths in there, families want baths. Showers are not good for families. And this way it'll definitely attract as a family. But a lot of these walls, again, these walls here are probably patchable this, in this room, looking at these. So they look rough now like this, but once you've filled a few of these holes in and you've painted them, they're, they're gonna look all right. And this one here, see, that wall there is not so bad, this one, I don't think it's patchable, probably definitely needs a skim. That's, that doesn't worry me whatsoever. We've had, it's on a mortgage well, so you've had surveyors come out on this and they've not pulled out these cracks. It's probably just a little bit of movement or something, but they don't look like uh, any structural issues. So yeah, I probably might just skim a couple of those in and then patch these walls up. As you see, as I said, the first fix electric's in. Rip out, it's done. Similar to these ones, I feel they could be painted these. Again, we're getting the quote on the plaster in, and it's gonna be ultimately down to the investor, his final choice, we just give him the advice. So, look, follow this journey, make sure, that if you're watching a video on my day in the life sort of style video, look out for the longer version of this, gonna come out soon, so make sure you subscribe to my channel if you wanna see the full version of this. This'll be, we're gonna document this throughout the whole renovation, and at the end, we'll be showing you the end results of what we've done along the way, and reveal what we're gonna do with this, whether we're gonna BRR it, whether we flip it, whether we give it to social housing, or whether we turn it to a HMO. So make sure you subscribe to watch out for that future video. So right, at the moment, we're in a street where I own, we've bought three, I own, well, I'm about to own two of them, but we've bought three of them on this street. So this corner plot here is, is mine, I bought this particular one, yeah, it must be coming up to about five years ago, but let's take a little walk. If you follow us around here, we'll take a little walk. So I bought this property here, and this property just up here what we're coming up to, I bought this for one of my investors, but the investors changed their mind and they're selling it, so I'm buying it off them. So when we talk about the property delta matrix, this is a typical property delta matrix. It's not a BRR, sometimes you, 
it's like when you get a bit bigger, it's not always about, it's the opportunity cost of, of waiting for these BRRs is sometimes not worth the time it's gonna take you to get the BRRs. So with this particular one, it's got a social housing tenant in there. It's bang on that sort of one. The price we're buying it for, 73K, 500 pound a month, guaranteed rent. It is just solid to go into my portfolio. It could be BRR'd by the way, but I've just put it straight on a five year fix to help me with that property delta matrix to give me that stability in my portfolio. I could spend 10 grand on it, BRR it, ask the social housing provider to be at. We could put for, probably force the rent to about 575. But again, you've got to look that 10K to get an extra 75 pound a month. I could recycle some more money, It'd probably value up about 95-ish, but you have to then weigh that up. And then just down the end of this road here, we bought another one for one of our investors. These houses on here were the perfect, the all-weather portfolio stuff. When I show you the section of all-weather portfolio where you've got the stability stuff that if somebody loses their job, they can go into benefits and it still gets covered. These were perfect ones for that. Because the market's growing so much, these are slowly growing out from being them. As I said, the one we was around the corner on, it's the same estate, is now 625. That's 125 pound a month. It's also 90K purchase prices, so the mortgage are higher. So you have to try high, charge higher rents. So so you but you have to move with these markets and the market's moving if you stick with what worked yesterday what you're going to be doing is sitting around waiting for yesterday and yesterday's not going to unfortunately come so this is one of your typical property delta matrix the typical all-weather portfolio stuff that i bought this house about nine ten years ago and the thing i love about these ones these steady ones that tenant's been in there for about nine years maybe 10 years i can't remember when exactly bought that bought it for 42k it needs a refresh but the tenant's still in there so there's no real major point doing that i brr'd it at the time i got it revalued at 67 but this is an exact example back then i could spend minimal money and still brr today i can't do that my max spending on property and i'll take you around to another property i'll show you as well as an example of this but my max spending on properties was around 4k 5k if i went over 4 or 5k i wouldn't i wouldn't buy the property purely because it's another deposit but today you've got to spend 10k to get the brr so either i could carry on waiting around for them deals which i'm never going to get again and i would have still been waiting to this day or i move with the market and evolve at the moment the market's massively evolving but look follow me around to here basically we just bought this one and again this is again another foundational house house and benefits this is a four bedroom so house in benefits is a is 650 a month, so we've got 700 pound a month, so if they lose, like they can fold that top up, if, just, if they're a working tenant, it's literally that one there in the middle, uh, it, it's not this one with a burnt fence, I've not even seen that, but it's the one there in the middle, we'll get a long term tenant in, in now, and we'll get really, really it's a, just a foundational, foundational property, you know, so the thing with professional tenants and the one we took you to, like the, that one we're doing at the moment is, if they lose their job, it don't get covered by benefits, the likelihood of 140k them saving up 10%. Look, the average wage in Stockton is around 30 grand a year. So combined income is around 40 to 50k between two professional couples. To save up 10% for 140 house is not very difficult for them. So you get higher turnover. As you see over that one over there, the tenant's been in there for nine years. That's where you get real profit from buy to lets. Turnover destroys your profit profit on buy to lets. Right, so if you look over there, straight over there, I own that house there. When I pull round. So I own that house there, and I bought that house like back in the day when I said the BRRs we used to do, maximum I would spend is four or five K. That was the average property he was doing. Two things happened with that though. There was a caveat to that, so you might think that's great. We was recycling, leaving five grand in a deal back then was pretty average for us. Some deals we got all money out. We've done probably, we're selling for other, selling deals on, buying from investors, buying from myself, probably over 100 deals now or, or thereabouts, and never sat down and counted them up. Probably only a dozen of those all money out deals. And some of them has been because of equity growth, not just of the BRR, but as in straightforward BRR, all money out deals. Maybe a dozen of those, but back then, this particular house here, so this is the talking about the change of market conditions. So this house over here, what we've done with this was, we bought it and it's just a section 24 come in. So literally I've done maybe five deals before it where we'd spent five grand on it, we got all our money out. But there's a point in the market when things shift and if you hold on to yesterday, as I was saying, like yesterday's not today. And if you keep on holding on to yesterday, it's never gonna come back yesterday. And the market shifts, so these, we had a handful of these where we spent the 5K on it, the banks come out and wouldn't revalue them. So we had to then shift and say, are we now willing to spend 10, 15K on these to do the BRR? Or do we keep on looking for these 5K BRR deals? We can't find the 5K refer BRR deals. So if I'd have carried on doing that, that was five years ago. I'd have no more properties in my portfolio. So you have to evolve with the times. And at the moment, Back then we left 15K in that, but the market's been kind to us. So to say that revalued at 106. So we bought it for 60, 
7,000, we spent about 4K, I can't remember exact figures. We then also got it revalued at six, uh, 78. I thought that was low at the time. Definitely thought it was an 85, 90K house. But again, the market shifted. The banks were looking differently. Those cautious, because Section 24, that tax on landlord, they wasn't sure how they would play, play out. It's when it first got announced. So as a result, we left 15K in. Leaving 15K in a deal today is pretty standard. Back then, it was like end of the world sort of stuff. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> we didn't like it. But again, we've had to evolve. I don't, 15K, what I'm trying to get your head into is 15K, I've had rented, that's been rented for five years straight. And we get about £278 per month on that for a straight five years. So having that return on 15K, that's money sat in the bank with the inflation that we've got today would be doing absolutely nothing. It'd be worth less. The buying power is losing about 10% per year, if not more. That's the reported inflation, but if not more. So even that last house I showed you as well, one of them last ones I showed you, I bought that just for a return on my capital. I'm not looking to recycle money. I've got 21K. I'm going to put 21K into that deal, and I'm going to have a, a fantastic return on my capital. Anything above 10% return on capital is really, really, really strong. So yeah, I think the expectation, you've got to shift. It's not all nice trying look for the BOR deal all money out but if they're not there it's better than your money being eroded in the bank so right literally just filled up so talking about inflation inflation is filling us all in the pockets at the moment just at Tesco's filled up at the tank at Marco used to be about 80 pound to fill up I just put on 114 pound in the tank so again this is going back to emphasize sit around waiting for these deals you are not only got an opportunity cost of the rent that's not coming in you also got your money just burning away the buying power of your money is evaporating as we speak. So inflation is real and it's getting worse and it's set to be worse for a long while. So, so yeah. So really a conclusion of what I've been going over in this video is really make sure you build this Delta property matrix out correctly. You know, like don't get seduced into this really high earning stuff. There is odd exceptions as a rule as I explained before, but then you can work out if you're exceptional or not by doing this simple score and really encourage you to score yourself from zero to 10 on all of these and it'll tell you where to start on here. The banks lend to you on the size of your experience and they won't lend you on a development if you've got no experience and that's for a reason. It's, as I said before, it's called responsible lending. So be a responsible borrower, be a responsible around what you're doing. Always push yourself, you always got to step up. I'm not trying to hold you back but you've got to build that courage, courage, confidence, and conviction. Without that, you're going to get nowhere. So look, listen, if you're here to the end, thank you so much. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell icon. Really, really helps the channel out. Please put in the comments any of your views around this. Please share this. If you think somebody's going to get value from this, my, my why is to live on my terms. My mission is to help as many people live on their terms using property as a vehicle to do that. So please share this out there if you find somebody's going to get any value from this. Don't forget, I'm running another on patch training day. It was something massively out of my comfort zone, but really enjoyed it. Got a lot of demand for it, a lot of interest. So just trying to collide some dates, but if you're interested in that in the comments as low, below you're also gonna be able to register for the on patch training. This gives you not just the theory, it gives you the practical stuff. You, you can come out to my refurbs, you can touch them. You will take you through some exercises to analyze these deals all in, not just in theory, in practice. So register below for that. Remember, you don't evolve your ideas. You never live on your own terms. So evolve your ideas, live on your own terms. Have an amazing day.